All right, that's it. Going for it. If I lose power, we're done. Because <laughs> I can't. This is, I picked a bad night to do this apparently. Um, there's, with the storms and everything, we are struggling, struggle bus. Okay, this will catch up eventually. So, anyways, I don't even know where I was got. Oh, the, the keg, I'll, uh, I'll, I will do an update. I'll tell you about the keg situation soon with the video. This is the last time, last one. So if you're here, welcome. If I, if this fails again, I'm out. All of the, let's see, come on. It's just, All the power lines around me are above ground, which is not abnormal, but um, there's also poor tree management around us. So there are often uh, times when it gets windy that the power goes out because tree limbs have hit the power lines and it turns into a whole thing. So that's why I'm losing power and the stream sucks. So that's okay. All right, we're gonna keep going. Um, I think between the one gallon keg and uh, I have plenty of bottles here. I'm gonna try and fill up all the wine bottles I have because um, it's just easier that way. Well, <laughs> Koala and Melpo, I can't say your name, sorry. One, two, fourth time, yeah, fourth time's the charm. Uh, I'm gonna fill up all the wine bottles I have first because this stuff's really good and honestly, it's really easy to drink more than just a bottle of it um, at a time. So it's pretty light, so I could probably get away with a wine bottle. All right, ooh, this blood orange though, it's pretty good. I have, um, I went to a, a wine festival I guess is what it officially was um, at somebody's house yesterday and uh, so naturally because it's a wine festival and I knew the people I said hey can I um, can I collect the bottles and so I ended up collecting something like I mean it was I got like 25 wine bottles so I'm gonna be uh, uh, delabeling those and they'll replace everything I'm using tonight I give away um, to my friends because this is like a um, homebrew, not homebrew, this is a house standard. Okay, my cat wants out, hold on, buddy. Oh, there we go, okay. Um, oh, uh, I don't order my, sorry, someone asked about labels. Um, I get my labels, I actually have the files to be able to edit them and do all the things for them. So I customize them as I need for each mead and then I print them out at a local print shop here on glossy sticker paper after I've designed them and put them in the right, you know, on the paper or whatever. Uh, and then I cut them myself. I have a cutting, paper cutting board. Um, so that's what I do. I'll, in fact, I have the labels. I'll probably throw those labels on tonight as well. Mel Paw Mini, Mel Paw Mini, Mel, Mel Paw Mini, oh, I, I haven't messed that up, so sorry. A few Italian restaurants. Yeah, seriously, if you need free bottles, go to a restaurant, find a nice um, restaurant to just ask, because, I mean, a lot of people, they throw those bottles out, and if they know that they're gonna go to some use, someone's gonna get some use out of them, then they're for sure gonna be uh, more likely to help you out, but, you do have to ask. You gotta do the awkward thing. Ooh, I got it. I'm surprised. Interesting. I need to finish this off so I can get a, a glass of my mead here. So someone asked me earlier what my favorite mead I've made, and uh, least favorite and most favorite. And then I think the power went out. Least favorite for me, um, Honestly, like my elderberry one that I made with the Amaretti flavoring was a little bit underwhelming. It was okay, but it was just, wasn't super great. 
Most favorite, this apple cinnamon is one I make a lot. If I could just keep recreating my peppermint, uh, original peppermint one from two and a half years ago, I would, I'd drink that every night. That thing is fantastic. But it's also, I mean, it's two years old, so it's got some, it's got some help in that regard. That thing is really good. Um, honestly, most anything with age has turned out to be pretty good. I made an IPA recently. I did it, I made it on a live stream and then I um, actually took and bottled it. Did I bottle it on a live stream? No, anyways, I bottled it and did all the stuff and it didn't turn out very good. It's um, not great. So that was my first time making an, a IPA for myself. I've made it with a friend, but I made IPAs before with friends, but never by myself. Um, so it was okay. Part-time wine bottles or beer bottles? I prefer to use wine bottles when I can, but I find that beer bottles are much easier for weird meads, which I tend to be known for now. And um, also just, you know, it's a little less, it's not as overwhelming for people to take and uh, receive a, a beer bottle worth of mead. When you give a wine bottle, that can be kind of like, well, you know, hopefully you like it, so. Hmm. My friend, a wine distribution salesperson. Yeah, definitely. I made a braggot last month, opened a bottle last night, and, I, and it didn't carbonate. Huh. Did you, did you like start with too high of an ABV? Maybe you capped out the yeast, especially if you're using a beer yeast. There could be a likelihood that those beer yeast were not able to reach up to like 12 to 14%. So if you made a really high gravity braggot, that could have been the problem. Ever made a cranberry mead? Want to do a mold cran? Hmm, not sure if I'd add any mold spices. Uh, on, I haven't made a mold mead before. And I'd like to do that. I haven't made a cranberry mead either. I've done pomegranate, which is pretty close to cranberry in my head, and it's tart. So I have experience with pomegranate, and you'll I've got some videos coming out with that stuff. But um, I would definitely put spices in the secondary. Um, and I, honestly, you might be able to get away with making a traditional mead in the secondary adding like cranberry juice or your cranberries, maybe if you do fruit, and then after you let the fruit sit in there in the aging stage, I guess, technically, you wanna, you could add your spices, rack, rack them off of that as you need. That's what I would do, but what do I know? Um, I'm wanting to attempt to brag it. Definitely, it's worth it. One of my favorite beers I've had is a brag it. Um, made a brown ale. No, yeah, I, I honestly, um, I haven't really dove too deep into the like, the beer brewing world of like making recipes myself. I've just used a lot of kits, so I've cheated a little bit. Collaborated with a brewery that made a crazy good braggot. I would be curious to hear about that. Um, did you at any point use Camden tablets? I made a mistake when I was trying to carb. Yeah, I've, I've made a mistake of adding sorbate or Camden tablets and unfortunately that kills those yeast. So uh, if you're trying to bottle carbonate, definitely don't stabilize, that's for sure. It was about 9%. Ah, oh, interesting. Yeah, I wonder, uh, there could be a chance, Bob, that the uh, um, yeast were not in their fermentation temperature range, therefore they didn't re-ferment or they weren't comfortable enough to ferment. So it sounds like you made yourself a, um, a not carbonated mead, but you know, still, it's still good from what you said. So that's, there's that. If you're, ooh, if you're just joining, thanks for being here. It's Sunday night. We're all hanging out. We all have work tomorrow. So, uh, I'm just sitting here. I'm gonna be bottling this man-made sizer. It's an apple cinnamon mead that it's like standard in my house, essentially. And I give this one out to friends a lot because I think I've gotten pretty good at it. In fact, let me down this and I'll tell you what it tastes like. I think I've got uh, good at it so that I can introduce people into the world of mead in a comfortable way. Because lots of times if you give them something real sketchy, um, like, hey, try this peanut butter jelly mead, and they've never had a mead before. Um, the standard, I think people just get sketched out, which I'd be fair, I'd be sketched out. Let's see, I need a, I need a little taste of this. 
I think I might end up filling up most of all these wine bottles. I do have, and this was before the stream cut off again because of stupid weather. Um, I do have a keg, a, a one gallon keg worth of this mead currently that's gonna be carbonated. Um, so that should be kind of fun. But, all right, let's get a little taste of this bad boy. Come on, forget gravity helps a lot. This thing is much better, I will say carbonated. It is like 7%, super light, kind of sweet. Um, oh man, that cinnamon, this is, ah. I'll take it back, this is my favorite mead. 7%, it tastes like apple juice. Uh, the, I think the really nice thing about using um, a mixture of real apples is you get tannic value, adding mouthfeel from the actual apples. I used Gala, Pink Lady, Red Delicious, is that what I used? I think I used those three combinations. What did I use? Yeah, anyways, or Fuji, I used Fuji maybe. But you get tannic value from the skins, which adds mouthfeel. And then of course you get sugars from the fruit. And like I was saying way before, um, I actually stabilize the mead before I add the fruit in because it allows for those sugars to impart without being fermented on. So you keep nice apple flavor. And then in the secondary or, well I put my fruit in the secondary, I should say, or aging stage, cause it's stabilized. Um, after the fruit, I will pull it, off, pull it off the fruit and then add normally about one cinnamon stick per gallon. Uh, in this case, I only put three cinnamon sticks because I used organic cinnamon sticks and I've learned that they impart flavor more quickly for whatever reason. But this thing's very juice-esque, tastes like a, like one of those, like a, a nice cider? No, not a cider, because that's carbonated. Hmm. You still get nice honey character too, which is, it's very warm. This is like, you could drink this warm, you could drink this cold, you could drink it carbonated. It's pretty pretty good. Um, I'm at work right now. All right, sorry, I'm missing some things. Also trying not to spill everything. Would you say this is your final apple cinnamon? Um, what would I tweak about this? I honestly, I think I'm pretty solid with, with this. I, I wish I could tell you the recipe off the top of my head right now, but I have too many recipes going on in my head. I think it was two and a half gallons of apple juice, or maybe three gallons of apple juice, two gallons of water, um, five pounds of honey, clover honey, and the secondary I added quite a few apples, about nine, nine, 12, what was it? About 12 pounds of, of mixed apples, Gala, Fuji, Pink Lady. I can't remember what the fourth one or third one was. And then cinnamon sticks. So uh, three cinnamon sticks for this one. Turned out really good. It's really young. I mean, this thing's only two months old. I, I mean, that's older than some, some meads. But I'm pretty happy with it. Ended up pretty good. Have you ever made a, or, or sorry, do you prefer to drink this young or aged? I think because this is a lower ABV mead, it kind of fares a little bit better younger. Uh, I, don't, I don't really know though, long-term, it might be really good. I don't have, I think my oldest version of this mead is like eight months old now, cause I've done one from a while back. So I'll have to uh, taste test that at some point. But right now it's good young, so I can't complain, especially carbonated. If I could carbonate all five gallons of this, I would have. However, uh, I did not. Okay, more things. Have you ever made it something sour or with bacteria? I haven't. I know there's the, a lot of people are talking about the, um, the sour yeast, whatever sour ale yeast that's been floating around. People are talking about that one. Uh, I'd be curious to try that one day, but I haven't made anything, especially with bacteria. Like the word bacteria scares me some because you get the wrong bacteria and, bacteria and it's game over for you. Hey, Yippio, how's it going, man? Good to see you. How long do you typically keep the cinnamon stick in? Great question. Um, oh. Again, this kind of falls in the same category of back sweetening. Um, I taste test it over time, and like I said, organ organic cinnamon sticks impart flavor faster. So I think I only left that cinnamon stick on for like a week and a half, and then or the three cinnamon sticks, and it it had imparted that full flavor that I wanted in the week and a half. 
I can't tell you the exact amount of time. I think you just have to taste test it and then decide when you feel like you're ready to pull it off. Because some people like things more cinnamony. This thing right here, very present on the nose. Um, not as present. I mean, it's definitely present on the palate. Yeah, it's, it's, it's there. Also about the keg you're showing off. Learn not to store sideways in the fridge. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing. Um, it definitely will, you gotta, you gotta store it upright. You gotta do all those right things. Uh, I did a honey, honey crisp Tupelo Sizer. Ooh, that sounds good. It's been fermenting for two weeks. Man, Tupelo honey. I've used that once in my time and um, it was pretty good. I made the mistake of well, I say made the mistake. I used bentonite to clear it, and I feel like that um, was not a wise choice. For whatever reason, it, it like ripped away a lot of the key important flavors that I missed. So, I don't know. I think that's, that's, that's just my experience. I used bentonite again recently, and it did not strip flavors. So, I don't know what happened at that point. Or maybe I was just dumb and didn't have a great palate, which is very true. Um, mail you some Tupelo. Ooh, I, I would love some Tupelo. That sounds good. Tupelo honey is very unique and, oh, oh gosh, I gotta watch this. Um, and I think that, uh, it's pretty rare too, from what I, at least around me here in Oklahoma where we have nothing. Okay. I gotta rotate this. Oh, this carboy's heavy. This last bottle is going to be a drink drink myself one because it's going to be a little bit yeasty i'm getting some of the yeast from the bottom of it smoked pineapple boche Ooh, that sounds good would you recommend bentonite i would recommend bentonite um i did it'll be a little while before it's out but i did a clearing test using four different clearing methods and bentonite was one of them and it worked very well so i would recommend it for sure Ooh, okay um, let me, uh, 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 yeah, let's do that. Okay. I'm going to move this now. I've got everything, uh, filled, which is nice. So that first step, annoying step is done. I filled most of my, all of my, um, wine bottles. Now we need to cap it and cork it. This is where I can make a big mess. Come on. I wish I could just keg everything. Doing the most just kegs everything. It's kind of nice. Well, it doesn't keg everything. He bottles some, but most of his stuff is kegged. So he just, he's living the dream. I, wish, I envy that. Okay, that's gonna fall for sure. That's gonna make a mess. Whatever, moving this. Oh, what's happening? No, I'm spilling. So I heard something spilling and it's the stupid auto siphon. Dang it. Quality, high quality stream. This is what you get from the man made me channel. What have, uh, what have I missed? Um, lots of fake Tupelo, yeah. Would you ever use pea leaf in a mead to change color? All right, yeah, I think I would. I don't know what, I've never used it, so I don't know anything about it, but I still, I think it'd be interesting um, to do. So, hey, we got 42 people. Welcome, everybody. I am super glad you're here. It's Sunday night, and um, like I said earlier, everyone, most everybody has work tomorrow, or maybe you're at work now. If you are, leave a comment. I'd love to know if you're getting to watch a live stream from uh, from your work. But uh, we're, we're bottling an apple cinnamon mead that I did not do on the channel. Well, I didn't do as a video. This is one of my own home house brews. What's the word I'm thinking of? House standards. Oh shoot, I feel so dumb right now. Um, house blend? No, that's not what I'm thinking of. Anyways, someone will help me. Only 6.45, yeah, it's 8.45 here in Oklahoma, so, um, and I'm, I'm on that teacher life. So eventually, I do have to sleep and be a 
be a model teacher for the youngins in the world. House poor, yeah, that seems right. Monday, ooh, that was not very secure. Oh, this is the sketchy one anyways, so that's fine. This one has a bunch of yeasty, I'm gonna put it to the side. I don't wanna label it, I'll just drink it. Get rid of some of these bottles, since I don't need them. I didn't end up with any beer bottles of this, or maybe one or two. Now we have to cap and cork and do all those things. Move that out of the way. Okay, I did all my caps, all my corks, all the things down here. Oh my gosh! Nice. Oh, are you kidding me? Y'all, I just shot mead all over my shirt from this auto siphon because I decided to pick it up and then push the lever down and I got cannoned. Look at that, solid stuff. We're gonna use silver caps. 245 in Ireland. Dang. Well, um, geez. Are you talking, that's gotta be, that's wild. You were up late. I would be dead asleep. Let me see if I can, actually, I'm not gonna move that setup. I've already had enough problems tonight. I'm just gonna go for it. So, what other questions we have? Picking up a baby out of a bath. <laughs> True that. that, that is relatable. Oh man, let's see. I might need to actually take in. Um, I don't wanna move, that's fine. These corks, normally I try to get them, oh, there we go. A little bit of water. It helps them go into the bottle a little better. Cause otherwise they, uh, I mean, that's still sticking out, about, about the same amount. Oh well, that's fine. So, uh, like I was saying earlier, somebody asked me about my favorite meads and things I've done. I wanna know, without, of course, you don't have to give away your recipe, but what's like your favorite, favorite mead you've ever made? Um, I think everybody has one that went really well, and I'd be, if you wanna share your recipe, that's fine, but you know, you can even leave it vague and say, I made a blackberry boche or whatever. One of my, um, I, if you've watched the channel, then you probably know I've done quite a few boches at this point. I've also done quite a few um, apple cinnamon meads, like tonight. And um, the, the one of my favorite boches I've made, it used to be the raspberry boche but it has been trumped by the um, apple pie boche, which is something I'm working on again. Um, do you drink every bit, a bit every day, or binge on the weekend? I'm a, I'm a light, you know, I got enough bottles at home that I can come home and drink a bottle of mead. You know, I, that's pretty normal for me. I, um, well, Here's a fun, I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but so some of you guys have seen, maybe if you saw a picture recently, this is all of my stuff up above. So this is, maybe, this is not gonna work very well. That's all my storage. So you see, I, I try to organize it pretty well, but um, and I also have, I'll have to take a picture of it at some point. I have a, a bunch of bottles that I keep stored underneath my bed because I don't have, the space up here anymore for them. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. But um, I have enough mead that I can come home and, and, you know, drink a bottle. I normally don't try to drink, especially if it's like a school, school day. I try to keep away from it. More weekend activities, if anything. Uh, have you ever made a banana mead before? I've made a strawberry banana mead. I used real strawberry. I used, um, real banana and it turned out okay. It wasn't wasn't fantastic. Banana is not a great, itself does not provide a lot of flavor. So I think that you kind of have to, um, you have to find other ways to get it. 
like artificial flavorings, unfortunately. But those can be kind of kind of sketchy. Um, trying to catch up. First batch. Most of our brews are still aging. Coffee and pumpkin spice. Ooh, I need to try pumpkin spice again. Why? Wish I bought the floor corker. The oh, this hand corker is life or hand floor corker is life changing for sure. Definitely invest. And ever thought about selling your mead? I would love to do that if I could do it legally without getting in trouble. Unfortunately, um, you have to jump through some hoops to do that, which would require me to um, more than likely quit my day job. <laughs> and I don't really want to quit that until I know something great is lined up. I like my day job. My day job is nice. Ooh, I'm surprised this, this bottle. This one is nice. Look at that guy. It's not super clear, a little bit hazy. But I'm not a clarity snob, to be frank with you. I just, if it looks, if it tastes good, it's good. Clarity is nice to look at, but it's not the end of the world. Sell them as empty bottles, yeah. How many gallons should I make if I want to have a small bottle every day? Well, it depends on your ABV. I mean, if you are, <laughs> if you're like me in the first um, probably 25 meads I made were all 14 to 16%, you might only need a beer bottle of that to get you through an entire night. Or if you're a lightweight, you know, you might need a, a 187 milliliter, which is half a wine or half a beer bottle worth. But um, that's hard to say. It just depends on what you want to do. Some people can put down four or five, you know, beer bottles and be fine. Some pe other people can only take one and then they're blasted. Uh, what would you call a mead with tangerines and strawberries? Um, interesting. I, I think that's just a mellow mel at that point. Um, that just falls in that mellow mel category. So, cranberry black cherry mead. Ooh, that sounds good. My level corker makes me feel <laughs> strong. <laughs> that's funny. Um, as a fellow teacher, did I miss something earlier? Oh, did you ask the uh, comment about um, about on a night? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, farmer market. I know Texas legal. Well, I'm in Oklahoma now, so I was in Texas at one point, but back here in Oklahoma, and we've got we've got problems. Oklahoma, we've got some great things, and we've got some some big problems. Uh, make five gallon session every couple months. What grades? I teach middle school and I'm a band director, so I, I teach music. That's my, my MO. How many gallons should I brew? Enough to make a bottle a day. I mean, if you're going a bottle a day, you're gonna need, what's the math? 12 bottles, 12 beer bottles is a gallon. 360, 230. You're gonna need 30 gallons to get you through a year. Does that sound right? Somebody fact checked my math. 360. Five, you're gonna need at least 30 gallons, it seems like. I could be wrong. Where can I start if I wanna brew mead? Uh, grab some honey from wherever you can find it. Um, I would recommend not um, buying something that's not like raw or unpasteurized. Grab some water wherever you can get it, which is probably local to you somehow, and just go for it. Throw some water and honey, and if you don't have wine yeast, you can use bread yeast, not preferred, but order yourself some, some uh, wine yeast, that'll help you out, and then go for it. I guess I didn't bottle any beer bottles. It's interesting, I thought I had bottled some. So now, I don't even need these cups, let me, let me get my labels, which they are printed out, and they're ready to go. Where did I put those? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Oh man, this is a mess. I, I always print out too many labels. So right here, like, these are all, these are labels, extra labels that I have. And then these are all, all my labels, so my man-made sizer, which, apple mead with cinnamon, yeah, okay. I have too many labels, like I said, so I gotta monitor, make sure I'm getting the right one. Wow, we got uh, we got the quite the crew here. Great to see you guys. It's, it's nice to have some people around. Um, 
I'm missing stuff. What's the best yeast to get the highest ABV? Uh, Lalvin EC1118 or the Lalvin K1V1116 or the Mangrove Jax MO5. What other ones get up to 18%? There are quite a few that get up to 18%. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty high ABV. If you wanna go past that, there is a super high gravity ale yeast that gets up to 25% supposedly. So if you wanna go crazy and get that, you can make yourself a, a bomb to blow people up basically. So, ooh, that was loud. Um, six gallons a month. Was my math that wrong? 20? That doesn't make sense though. No, I'm not talking wine bottles. So, so if he wants a wine bottle, he's gonna need, what's that math? So, someone with better math than me. I'm not a math teacher. I'm so far from a math teacher. There's a stream nearby that feeds into a horse trough. Interesting, okay. Horse, horse trough mead, that sounds fun. Um, so far traditional mesquite honey, there you go. Lemon juice, yeah, 1118, yep. Uh, lazy napper, hi, love your vids. I have a cider uh, with ex excellent clarity. Go uh, hazy and sour. Finish. Hold on, I'm trying to understand what you said. Excellent clarity, got hazy and sour in the last three days. It was finished. Did if it was very low ABV, there could have been a chance that the um, even then most bacteria would not be able to compete with like a a 5% cider. I don't know. Anyone have any uh, idea about why their uh, mead, you know, died on them? I'm gonna start labeling these bad boys as I do because again, I have so many things that I am currently, if I don't label it, then it turns into a random bottle, which is not the end of the world, but random bottles uh, don't get given away. Although, they're still fun to drink. What's wrong with using bread yeast? Uh, there's really nothing wrong with using bread yeast. The, the big quote problem with bread yeast is that it is not necessarily made for um, brewing necessarily. It's made, of course, for, for bread. If you use it for um, mead making, you were kind of, you could run, run into issues of or you know, I'll say this, you can lose certain honey characters because bread yeast doesn't is not graded to ferment on honey. Therefore, when it ferments, it blows off certain aromas. And um, in my experience, that kind of takes away most of the mead properties. Also, it's uh, very yeasty tasting. It, tastes, it takes quite some time to mellow out. Although there are some recipes that do recommend you use bread yeast as your main yeast, like the uh, Joe's Ancient Orange. And people love that one. So I could be wrong, who knows? Um, water from the pipe. Yeah, I hope you didn't get it from the horse stall. That, that sounds like um, some bad news for sure. Let's see, what else we got? When should you wreck your mead for the first time? Um, do I have an example back here? What's a good racking? I don't have one. Oh, here's one. Here, I'll, I'll, this is not for a video or anything. Let me just move some stuff over. I've got quite a few projects back here. So here's an example. This one is, I took the shrub from my IPA, AKA the yeast and all those things. And I um, ended up just dumping it into some honey and letting it go. This thing fermented, you can see down here at the bottom, there's a bunch of sediment and things. It started to clear up some. So this is a good point for you to go ahead and rack into a new container because this is stuff you don't want to set on for a really long time. Basically, I would say rack whenever it starts to, not necessarily clear up, but when you see things start, oh, falling down from uh, suspension, which generally should happen after your fermentation ends, if that makes sense. Could be any factors, could be uh, 34 gallons for a year for beer bottles. Thank you, math, I'm not, math is not my strong suit. 
Now we can all go and brew 34 gallons this year so we can all maintain our figures. That is the goal, maintain the figure through the year. Christmas is about to happen, so, you know, you gotta, you gotta store up a little bit. You gotta start making those Christmas gifts anyways. Mead is a perfect Christmas gift to give to people because it's pretty cheap for you to make. You get to do something you like to do. And uh, if, you're, if you find a good recipe, then people love it, which is nice. Um, let's see, when you rack, how do you limit headspace? So on that one I just showed you, I have a lot of headspace because I fermented in that gallon and I, after, after racking, I lost a fair amount. You can actually take, oh, where's an example? Oh, oh it's all the way up there. Um, you can put some marbles into the mead and sanitized marbles and that will fill up headspace. Um, so that's one option. Uh, and that's what I would recommend if I were you. That's kind of what I've done. It's work, it works well. That's assuming 340 mil, true. Ko koala, good point. We're talking just straight up normal beer bottles, 12 milliliter, not 12, what is it mil? 12 ounce, does that seem right? I don't know. Um, careful the amount of honey that you add, check the ABV, juice will boost it. I don't know what they're talking about, missed it. One eighth of sediment at the bottom, still very active, bubbles rising. Yeah, so that probably, if it's, I mean, it could still be fermentation, that could be degassing. Um, if you want to help it degas, you can take and stir it up a little bit, and that will, like lightly, and that will uh, degas it, which will quicken the process a little bit to your racking point, if it's done fermenting. If it's not done fermenting, it's just gonna keep going at that point. Been making five gallons all summer, trying to find the perfect Christmas gift. That, I mean, been spraying wine preserver, interesting. Um, some people, you can also take and add, if you have like a, a, a wine saver thing that's like sucks the air out of your, your container, in the aging stage, you can do that and that works well. Um, do I want to put a label on this? Yeah, I do. That works well. So this is not going to be a pretty one. This bottle's so nice looking, and this label is just going to ruin it. So sad. It looks so nice, and then and the label's all crinkly. Just a few more. I made way too many labels. I guess I can. Ooh, I can. I didn't put the date on these. Dang it. I normally try to put the date on them so that when I look at a bottle, I can go, oh yeah, this is my July version. Uh, but I didn't this time, so that was kind of a fail. Quite, quite the fail. Best honey for the sweetest mead possible. Any honey? I mean, if you're going for a sweet mead, you can use any honey in the world, essentially. Um, now, if you're going for a sweet mead that has a true honey character and taste, then you gotta go higher quality. It depends on your local apiaries, slash if you can get it online, all of those things. So there's not, not a great answer for that. All right, that's it. Is that it, Alvin? That's it. And then of course we have the keg. Here's the keg. One gallon of it that I'll carbonate and put my stuff on in the future. But let's talk. Now that we got all the business out of the way, let's, let's, uh, Let's get some more questions. 68 people, fantastic. Um, I'll give you $10 for everybody not touch your face. Lazy, it's it's part of my life, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, how do you make your labels? I had a friend help me design them and then I, uh, she gave me the files so I could alter them as I need and so I just take and alter them as I need to with different information. And then I print them out. Um, I put them on to a little PDF, print them out in my local brew shop, not brew shop, local print shop, excuse me, and then cut them out myself. So quite a lot of work. For Christmas this year, I'm making some Amaretto. Um, date mine, go by the, the bulk aging. 
Where do you get your labels? I make them. That's the short answer. I do have um, a video about label creating if you want to go watch that. Uh, what? Did I miss a headspace question? I thought I had already answered that. She's been making years, but now money. Any re recommendations for someone to look a very sweet mead? Um, a Hill, I don't know if you're wanting. Yeah, I don't know if you're wanting me to answer which question, but anyways, you are gonna have to headspace. If you have too much headspace, put marbles on. If you want a sweeter mead, use honey. If you want a, a nicer tasting mead, use high quality honey. So you might have to spend four bucks, five bucks a pound to get nicer honey, but it'll make a difference. Short answer right there. Love to see the difference between mead with back sweetening and mead with leftover sweetness. Ooh, that's a good, a good one. I like that. That's a great, that'd be a good test right there. I have a bunch of things going on, um, a bunch of A-B tests I'm starting, and uh, so I think that'll be interesting, but I'll add that to my list. Maybe making like a 14, cap out like a D47, and make it sweet. Ooh, that's a good test. I'll, I like that. Um, can you carbonate a hydromel that was back sweetened without kegging? If you back sweetened it, I'm assuming you might have stabilized it. So not necessarily. You can't really carbonate it at that point. You can't bottle carbonate it for sure. If it's stabilized, you'd have to keg it. So like this right here is a great example of that. This is a, a mead that is stabilized, back sweetened, and this is my kegged option that can carbonate. This isn't a not kegged. So this won't bottle carb, unfortunately. Uh, what's the strangest mead ingredient you've used? Uh, fenugreek. I did that for the uh, Iron Bee, which was two years ago now. Yeah, it's been two years since I started that. Um, and that was a weird one. It had lots of uh, maple syrupy taste to it. But I ended up making a pear fenugreek cilantro mead. So I just embraced the insanity of it. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. Let's go for it. That's what I made. Um, how, much, how many points over yeast tolerance will make a sweet mead? Um, 0 0.01 probably is a sweet mead. So, you know, if you're going to 14%, you're going to get to 1.1105, I think sounds right. Or 1.110. Um, to hit the yeast cap, you'll want to hit up to 1.1. Two zero to cap out the yeast that gets up to 14%. If you have a 14% yeast, of course. Mm, bottle carbon. Nice, that's exciting. What's the benefit of using a keg like that? How hard is it to clean? Super easy to clean. I mean, I got a little bottle brush, so I just shove it down in there and do what I need. Um, I've had three or four different meads in it now and it's done well. It's carbonated, not super quickly. Um, you can do it in 24 hours if you shake it up a bunch and you carbonate and shake, shake, shake and all those things. It normally takes three to four days to fully carbonate, um, but you can quicken the process. That helps. For the sizer, did you use pectolize? Uh, no, I did not. Again, clarity is not the end of the world for me. This is what the mead looks like. Oh, there we go. So it's decently clear. I didn't use anything to help with clarity. Uh, I don't really care that much, honestly, about clarity. I just want a good taste in mead. Soda stream, I would not use a soda stream if I were you. That just adds oxygen to the brew. You could carbonate in the moment to do that, but I would not long-term carbonate. Don't trust yeast tolerance, it's true. There are some yeast, like the D47 says it goes to 14% cap, but then some people have said it gets up to 16, so I don't trust it either, to be fair. Um, any ever, anyone ever tried to use SodaStream? I would not use that, Koala. Important Oklahoma question, Sooners versus Cowboys. Well, uh, I would say Cowboys, I'm on, on that camp. I don't really care about football, but my, um, my girlfriend loves the Cowboys, so I have, to, um, I have to run along with that in order to um, appease. So, I uh, have gotten 17 out of the 47 wow. 
Wolf Blades, hey, yo, love your channel so much. Uh, learned so much from you and realized all the stuff I messed up on. Well, I have learned, um, I've made lots of mistakes. So hopefully you're getting to learn from my mistakes and I love getting to hear from you guys um, about your successes and your failures because I think we all have to be honest with our mead making. Um, all right, I got about 10 minutes left and I have to wrap everything up with my life, but I am gonna go ahead and open up one more bottle. We'll take a vote on this one. Let me pick my options. I've got a, this is my my things uh, I'm trying to give away at some point soon, so that's what I have right there. But, um, I've got, that's, oh, these are mostly beers though, which are not cold, so it's gonna be rough. Okay, how about this? Mmm. Ooh. Ooh, maybe. How about... I picked a bunch of beers. That was silly. What's this one? Simcoe. Got some hops. Got an orange blossom mead here. And my... Th a traditional mead. All three of these are... Uh, yeah, learned. So, you get to choose. I want some votes in the chat. This is a light orange blossom mead. Um, don't have a lot of information because it, I only have a simple label on it. This is a traditional mead coming from, um, oh, I know what that's from. It's from a different video. This is a hopped mead. Uh, it is a couple months old. And this one, you're gonna see a video tomorrow about hopping two different meads. This is that one. So, traditional mead, light orange blossom, or hopped mead, your choice. You choose, whoever gets the most vote, votes, I will open. Be curious. How often do you take gravity readings? Um, I normally do it like when I think the, the mead is finished fermenting. Uh, unless I think it's stalled, in which case I will go ahead and take some gravity readings to see where it's at. But most of the time, at the end. I see hopped, orange blossom, hopped, hopped. Ooh, it's between the two. Oh, this is t close. I got a three, four, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, it looks like the hopped mead. I, got, I saw eight votes for hopped. Five votes for for tradition or for orange blossom. All right, let's get the Simcoe one. You guys get to be you get to hear about this um, before the video even comes out. The video, is, you know, here. Okay, this one's had some time to age. Pretty clear. I started this. I bottled it two months ago, so that tells you how old that video is. But Mmm, yeah, this is very reminiscent. The Simcoe hops, I got these from uh, the Iron Bee. They sent out a bunch of hops and things just as a thank you. Um, if you wanna support them, the, the Iron, not the Iron Bee, but the Mead House, they have a Patreon where you get to be a key holder and they actually send you stuff. So like, because I'm a key holder, they sent me um, a whole bunch of hops. And the first time I signed up, I got this cool bottle opener and a bunch of different things. So you can check them out. If you also want to support this channel, I have a Patreon and you get to see all my videos, um, you know, four days early and which is basically when a new video comes out, you've seen it already and you get to see the next video. So you get to see all my stuff early. I have some live streams and stuff I do. That's also there, Patreon. I think it's down in the description. So this is, this is definitely it's very, very hoppy. I, can't, I used one ounce, I think, yeah. It's like overshadowing all of that honey character. Whoo, that's like in my face, man. Hmm. Oh yeah, very earthy. It's got a lot of bite, a lot of astringency. It's like coating my mouth. Wow. I don't remember how high ABV this thing is. Honestly, it, uh, it came from a traditional mead what did I, that probably was like a 10 percenter, so. Not sweet. It's okay, it's, it's pretty good. Um, I was expecting sweetness 
there for some reason. So it's so earthy though. It's got some like pineapple-y, like tropical-y flavors that I'm, I'm catching and like some piney, like pine and spice. Interesting. Yeah, it's not bad. It's some age. All right, what have I missed? Have you ever thought about pimping out your workspace and installing a mead bar? Man, that'd be fun. It'd be, uh, especially during quarantine, that'd be a lot of fun. Would you ever do fan reviews of mead? Um, I don't do them on the channel. I have a second channel called Man Made Mead Extras where I uh, do mead reviews of my own, of commercial meaderies. I post the podcast that I do there. Um, I would consider, if you sent me a bottle, I will send you a video of my critique, but I will not post it on the interweb. So internet, I don't wanna, I'll get a little bit sketched out about um, people trying to poison me. You know, that doesn't seem fun. I don't like to be poisoned. I don't know about you, but that doesn't, doesn't sound like a fun thing. All the meads are going to medieval reenactments. I started a mead less than a week ago. Patience is hard. That is a great mead shirt right there. Ever tried raspberry honey? I'm planning on, go on a raspberry boche with whole fruit and was, was originally going to use orange blossom, but considering raspberry blossom. Definitely, if you can get a hold of raspberry blossom honey, I would use that, because that would be really, really good. Um, and I don't know about bocheing it, though. That could be really interesting. Worth a shot. Let me know how it goes. I'm curious. Uh, any plans on making a mead from a different country, Polish? Yeah, I think it'd be fun to do that. Um, I, so, <laughs> I have, I have a bunch of different meads going on right now. I have some Game of Thrones ones. Um, I'm, I just, I'm about to start Can It Be a Mead episode six, and you, and there's only two out on the YouTube channel, so um, obviously I've been hard at work with those. I, I just have, I'm honestly booking myself. Like this is a ton of stuff, and then I have meads on meads on meads in here that are keeping me busy. So, that's just unfortunate, but I would love to do that. Mm, Philippine, uh, mean, let's see. Uh, bottling a few different meats tomorrow, nice. Crystal hop dry, traditional. This is a, a tr dry, traditional mead that's hopped as well. My cat is losing his mind. Let me let him in real fast, he's struggling. Come on, buddy. All right. Um, have you ever tried the mead recipes from Skyrim? I haven't, that's on the list to do as well. That'd be fun. I just started the Game of Thrones ones because uh, I like Game of Thrones, I've read all the books. I haven't seen all the show. I've seen a couple seasons of the show. I just don't have HBO, so. Um, but I'd love to do that at some point. What temp is, is it usually in your fermentation room? The shroom sets at like 68, roughly 68, 69, 70 in that range. Um, I have a little fan over here that I turn on during the day most of the time to help circulate air because this is a garage, an enclosed garage. I have this room, which is half of it, and then the other room right here is my music room. So um, the, the central heating and air only is in that room. So I have to leave doors open in order for the air to circulate. Um, uh, juniper berry mead, ooh, that sounds good. What yeast would you use for hibiscus mead? Options D47, um, I feel like of those, and this is just a guess, that the K1B1 would be a good mead to pull out spice flavors because it's very bright and it retains bright notes. So I feel like hibiscus would have some of those bright notes. You know, it's also, it's a fast fermenter though. I would try the K1V1. D47 could also do pretty well. Um, yeah, I don't know, that's, that's a guess. I haven't, haven't done much with hibiscus before. How much does artificial light affect the secondary fermentation process? Uh, zero, I, I haven't noticed any extreme difference. Um, that could be a test to do in the future, to put one in a dark place and put one, you know, shine a light on it, but I don't, Think there's a huge fermentation difference? You guys are giving me ideas for for things now. I gotta write those down. Elderberry, elderberries or flowers? Mm, I don't know. All right, I got time for just a few more questions and then I gotta wrap up my life a little bit. 
um, and take care of this business. So give me your last few questions and then we gotta close this baby down. I gotta take care of some stuff. I gotta carbonate this bad boy. Hopefully uh, it carbonates pretty quick. Carbonates pretty quickly. I just upgraded my life and I pulled a, um, I'm not a dad, but pulled a future dad move by buying a fridge for drinks. So I um, currently am able to take this bad boy and put it into that fridge and uh, um, get it cold, which is nice. And then go in there and pop open some when I want to. Hey, Mo, good to see you, my friend. What's the best uh, type of honey for a mead, for a mead from store? You just need to find honey that's unpasteurized and unfiltered. That's the best way to um, avoid any weird flavors from mead making. Oftentimes, uh, if you use pasteurized or unfiltered or filtered honey, you're gonna run into a more watery feeling mead and uh, you're dealing with honey that is generally not all honey, but like 50%. So anything unpasteurized, unfiltered. Um, do you get honey from a local vendor? I have tried once and it was like they wanted $400 for a 60 pound pail. And I said no, because that's insane. So I get mine from, I used to, I use Dutch gold every once in a while. So Dutch gold is a great place. I've tried Webstront honey. I would not recommend it now after using it and seeing it age. Um, but I have used Glory Bee. Glory Bee is a great place to get honey as well. So those are online websites. If you have a local apiary that is reasonable, go support them. Uh, do you have a video on the keg? I'm really interested in it. Yes, it'll be out Thursday. So you gotta wait a few more days or you can go, um, you can join down below in the YouTube section here. You can say, you can join and it's one, $1.99 a month, but you get to see all my videos early. So, uh, and you support the channel, you help me continue to make mead. You can help me continue to make better quality content. Hopefully one day I'll get a better streaming setup to not have to um, deal with this, but all that goes to support the channel or the Patreon, patreon.com slash manmade mead. Um, you can see that now if you want to. Well, it'll be out, I should say it'll be out tomorrow. Um, I do the same, my keg doesn't fit in the fridge. Definitely do it. I bought a little, basically just small drink fridge. Do you cold crash any meads? If so, how long? Yes, I cold crashed something recently to stop it at 1.010 and I did it for like three days and it cold crashed it. Uh, I did add potassium sorbate and Camden tablets beforehand uh, to help it actually halt fermentation. What I'll recommend is if you add those things, add them before you put them into the mead because when it gets cold, it won't mix in. So, um, how curry mead, woo. Yeah, that's that sounds interesting. Let's talk about spicy. Um, Shaw, how much are the kegs? This one, um, I think this one was 99 bucks. You can get some other ones that I think are a little bit cheaper. Uh, yeah, I would just look up one gallon keg. This one's portable, which is nice. So if I was going for like a, you know, if I wanted to go on a picnic, I could take this and take my mead with me or a party or whatever, stuff like that. A little bit expensive, but for how long I'll have this thing, it's worth it. So, and I, I, I will definitely get some use out of it. Hmm. All right, you guys, it has been a lot of fun I apologize if you have been here since the beginning and then you encountered all of the struggles of this stream so far because uh, obviously we started off with some power outages and things. I've had a lot of fun, I hope you have too. Thanks for joining my random streams. Um, one day I'll adopt the uh, doing the most standard of telling you guys a week early about streams, but currently I just throw on the camera and if you're here, you're here, if not, You'll probably see it later on, but whether you're watching live or later, I appreciate you all. Go support your local meaderies if you have any. Go support um, your, you know, mead making people, your friends. Go make some mead, um, and then find all the YouTube channels of us mead makers, and you know, shower us with with the things you need. Um, not not specifically mine, but you know, we've got great content coming out all throughout YouTube for mead making, and. Uh, uh, 
you guys helping to push that content will only help the mead world grow. So thanks for watching. You guys are awesome. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I missed one thing that was support your local beekeeper. I missed it. Find your local apiary, give them a hug, give them some money. You'll get some honey. Yeah, that's true. I thought I had those backwards, but all right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Cheers.